Hello everyone, hope you're having the most awesome day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more MasterChef US contestants and see how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys! Adrian Nieto Season 2 contestant Adrian Nieto attempted to win the competition as a whole with his solid cooking skills. From the very beginning, Nieto was seen as someone pretty meek yet very polite, though was rarely seen laughing or smiling. While he did take the competition very seriously, that didn't stop him from being respectful to his fellow contestants. Despite the fact that he wasn't the most consistent chef, Nieto was widely known for being a talented cook. The man certainly had a lot of heart and recognizable skill, frequently putting out high quality performances. It became very clear from the get-go that Nieto was very passionate about cooking and wasn't just in it to win it. His work ethic and love for food is what pushed him so far into the competition, getting both the contestants and viewers alike to recognize him as a valuable chef. So much so that when certain cooks got eliminated, they admitted that they wouldn't be surprised if he won. While his run this season wasn't exactly triumphant, he definitely earned the respect of many for becoming the second MasterChef runner-up. Following his time in the competition, Nieto decided to host a whole slew of cookery events, demonstrations, and appearances at local restaurants and pop-up kitchens. For a while, it seems like he's been working as a chef at Frank Underground, which is owned by Jenny Kelly and Ben Starr, who are both fellow contestants. It's oddly been a while since Nieto has posted on social media, with his latest one being on June 12th of 2019. He was briefly mentioning how he'd participate in a cycling challenge slash fundraiser that would directly support kids with cancer. If you're interested, you can check out the Great Cycle Challenge USA and donate some money to help out children who really need it. Seems like Nieto is doing pretty well. Josh Marks Appearing in the third season of the show, Joshua Marks aka Josh can be considered anything else but an incredible fighter. First ranking in 8th place, thanks to a pressure test that would give those eliminated a second chance, Marks was able to return and fought his way to the finals. Being one of the tallest contestants to compete, Marks was incredibly kind and was extremely compassionate. He was always willing to lend a helping hand, like when he decided to aid Christine Ha, a blind woman, fold her towards leaning. On top of being unconditionally friendly, he was undoubtedly a strong cook, which is mainly why he got so far. The other reason was that he became much more competitive after returning a second time and decided to help out a lot less. Most notably, he decided to refuse Dave's request to give him some rice since he had forgotten it in the pantry. Understandably, he wasn't trying to be cold to the other home cooks, but he really wanted to get rid of any potential competition in any way he could. Regardless of the fact that he lacked consistency, Marx put on display that he was a force to be reckoned with. Thanks to his likable personality, he did befriend a lot of contestants including Christine, Becky, Felix, and Monty. Though he did seem to dislike Ryan for backstabbing him, Tally for her incompetence, and David for his delusional attitude. Sadly, the outcome of this chef's career is extremely tragic, so a fair warning to everyone watching, this is going to be pretty depressing. For a while, Marx was actively involved with the Make a Sound project, which attempted to raise awareness about mental health issues. Simultaneously, he was working professionally at certain restaurants and was chosen to compete in the culinary night fight in New York. However, after struggling for years with his battle against schizophrenia, Marx passed at his own hands. It's unfathomable to think someone this kind and talented had to leave us in such a way, but we hope he's resting peacefully. If you're having similar feelings, please do reach out since there are so many people out there who are willing to listen. Natasha Krinjak A contestant of the fourth season named Natasha Krinjak managed to rank up as the runner-up thanks to her undeniable skill. Known for her energetic and eager personality, Krinjak was easy in the beginning anyway to get along with. Though as time progressed, she became extremely competitive and could be very arrogant and toxic towards the other competitors. Since she's extremely passionate about what she does, she took the competition a bit too seriously. So much so that she would get all riled up over the pettiest things like when Beth called her team's cauliflower puree disgusting. To make matters worse, she began to act spitefully by doing things like yelling and targeting competitors for unknown reasons. Always trying to be the center of attention, when she didn't get it, she'd be rude and underestimate the other home cooks. She always made it clear that she was the best chef in the competition and looked down on her enemies based on their attitude and performance level. Her confidence wasn't completely unfounded though since she was a very consistent chef with a tremendous individual and team challenge record. Her only reason for getting so far was the fact that she frequently impressed the judges with her dishes. Due to her terrible character, she was bound to get into feuds with other contestants including ones like Beth, Chrissy, and Luca. Surprisingly, she did develop friendships with Bethy and Eddie and got especially close with Jessie. Alongside the fact that she became the fourth runner-up of Master Chef, she was also the only contestant to win four elimination challenges in a single season. Following her appearance on the show, Krinjak went back to being a stay-at-home mom full-time. Although for a brief moment she was offering some catering slash private chef services, but quickly moved on to something else. 
Since 2019, Cringejack has been running a catering slash meal prep delivery service called Meal Prep Boutique located in California. She also seems to post quite frequently on her Instagram, closing in on almost 2,000 photos uploaded. Go give it a look and you'll see that she's doing very well. Elizabeth Cavell MasterChef US contestant Elizabeth Cavell appeared in the fifth season of the show, ranking as the runner-up. Much like another contestant named Luca Manfe from the previous season, Cavell was considered to be a bit of a dark horse. Placing directly in the middle when it came to individual challenges, things changed as the competition ran its course. Winning her very first mystery box challenge, she proved herself to be someone worthy of the winning title. From then on, she won a whole slew of challenges, winning every single team challenge she participated in. This was in part due to the fact that she had so much versatility as a cook and was an amazing captain slash team player. However, she wasn't completely perfect having a pretty rough attitude and moments of pettiness. She would sometimes be rude to certain competitors, even undermine them if she didn't like their attitude. Regardless of this fact, she got along with practically everyone there, developing friendships with Christine, Francis L, Jamie, and Victoria. While she started off close to Willie, that turned into a mutual animosity and she also seemed to dislike Leslie for his talkative personality. Amazingly enough though, Cavell was the one and only contestant to win every single team challenge. Following her loss, she went on to become the creative director at MRY, but is still very passionate about cooking. Much like Natasha, Cavell shares a lot of photos on Instagram, close to 2,000 coincidentally as well. Additionally, she was demonstrating on the MasterChef cruise in both 2016 and 2017, which looked very fun. Stephen Lee Debuting in the sixth season of the show, Stephen Lee had one of the most outgoing personalities out of anyone in MasterChef history. Well known for his quirky, energetic, and unpredictable attitude, Lee would often raise his voice in excitement and make everyone laugh with his humor. Admittedly, he was very confident in the kitchen as well as passionate and a force to be reckoned with. Arguably considered to be one of the strongest cooks of his season, he had incredible versatility and leadership skills. Being someone who was tough and commanding, he also wore his heart on his sleeve, not afraid to let out his emotions. Like how he openly cried during a pressure test when he accidentally broke the crust for his fruit tart. Following his appearance on the show, he hasn't gone on to do too much, but it's still pretty impressive nonetheless. Working as an urban farmer and a private chef, he's also done a whole slew of guest chef appearances and dining events. We're glad that he's successful. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.